I am on record as saying that I wish, in my time in gaming, I had bought more core books and far fewer source books. And yet, the video field here is full of source books. Source books for the FFG Star Wars RPG, Fantasy Flight Game Star Wars Role Playing Game. Why do I have them? Good question. I would say that the reason is simple. These books are the exception which proves the rule. Unlike so many source books from so many companies which are so disappointing in one way or another, either by having the appearance of content but no actual content, or the content across the line of supplements fluctuates so widely that it's just frustrating and disappointing. This is nothing like that. This is not some flashy cover with limp black and white paper inside, unlike your full-color core book. No, these are as if they are pages from the core book itself. It's impressive. The content is impressive. Let's talk about why. Consistency. Each of these books offers the reader the same type of material presented to them in the same way. Each of these source books will present to the reader three new species, three new career specializations, and commentary on the career as a whole, with support material ranging from gear, through personal weapons, up to vehicles, and then on into starfighters and other space vehicles. All of them do. And it's all good. It's all in context. It opens up with an examination of the character primarily from a character point of view. And then as you move through the source book, it shifts more toward a game master point of view. In the beginning, it's how to look at this career, how to look at the career as a member of this career, how to look at the edge of the empire or the rebellion as a member of this career. And then as it moves through into the game master section, it provides you the tools and the insight to attract and engage, keep the attention of, and keep the activity level high for this type of character, and by extension, the type of player who enjoys these types of characters. In the Colonist book, it gives you discussion on using the system to your advantage for social encounters. The Colonist represents law keepers and frontier doctors and budding politicians. An ability to interact socially and interesting social engagements is very useful information to have, well represented in Far Horizons. Likewise for explorers. What kind of expeditions are out there? What is there to be found? What kind of gear supports it? In all cases, how should you get paid for doing it? Who will hire you? Hired guns takes a lot of care looking at those latter questions. Who's going to pay me and what's an appropriate reward? As does fly casual for smugglers. Where does the money come from? Where does trade flow? Who's hiring for what kind of job? That is what's answered in these books, and they do an exceptional job. Art, text, organization, theme, each one on par with the core book from which it's drawn. The pages really are indistinguishable from what you find within the core. Each source book laser focused on the context it's trying to present. Who are these characters? Where are they found? Where do they work? Who do they work for and why? The Smuggler's Book, focusing on things like gambling, taking risks, 
what to sell, who to sell for, hyperspace travel. The Aces book, looking at exciting new ways to travel through space and blow crap up. The Hired Gun, offering combative races, vehicles, contracts, colonists, how to explore that endless frontier. These are not the splat books of old, promising a lot and delivering little. These really are worthy of the name Sourcebook. Reading them has given me thoughts, given me insight, given me information I would not have come up with on my own. Packed into a package of less than a hundred pages, it's truly impressive. One of the major questions raised by people considering getting into this version of Star Wars role-playing is, do I need all the core books? It is through the source books that you can say no to that question with final authority. The source books are ways of bringing in material introduced in the other lines recast in an appropriate context for this line. That's the thing about this game. Edge of the Empire is very focused on fringe dwellers, people who live out from under the thumb of the Empire, who are pushing further and further away from all the things that civilized society must deal. Age of Rebellion, likewise, is focused completely on the Rebellion. Force and Destiny, when it comes out later this year, will like, likewise focus on matters of the Force. Through the source books, species or ships or locations might be put in proper context, introduced in one game line, then reintroduced in another. Now let's take a quick look and see what you get. In Fly Casual, as you go through, It talks about smuggling. It talks about working for corporations. It talks about working for the underworld. It talks about the people who trade. It goes into motivations and obligations. It offers, as they all do, three new species for play. Three new specializations for the career. And it introduces the specific new talents that goes along with those and the signature abilities, which cap off the career. Gear. Lots of gear. New vehicles. New starships. So as you can see, the balance shifts. Here, new vehicles is two pages, whereas new starships is considerably more. And all different types up and to and including a massive space station. Then we get into modifying ships and then the business of being a smuggler. Page after page on having smugglers in a group or having non-smugglers in a group of smugglers. What are the hazards of the occupation including hyperspace travel and a very useful chart dealing with times and distances. Cons, getting paid, stealing stuff, shootouts, gambling, the law. <laughs> get, get away from the law. And getting paid. And the effects of all of this on reputation. Packed, dynamite book, very impressive. Dangerous Covenants does the same job, but it does it for the hired gun. So it gives us a very different context, a very different feel. It talks about combat in Star Wars, ways to do it cinematically. It talks about who hires mercenaries and why. It talks about assassination. Gets into our three new species and all the things that make them tick. 
new specializations. Again, three, the talents that support those, the signature abilities that support those. Then it gets into lots and lots of new weapons. Right? Many more than we saw in Fly Casual. Then it goes into modifying the weapons and attachments for the weapons. And then we get into gear. And then we get into starship and vehicle modification to turn civilian craft into combat vessels, at least temporarily. And if you're hearing the A-Team theme in your head, you should. Vehicles, then more starfighters and freighters and transports. And then we look at hooks, right? how to work as a group for a company by yourself, planning out combat, specialized combat, right? running a combat-focused campaign and dealing with the opposite, and proper rewards, the hired gun pay scale, right? and advice on making combat seem more cinematic. Right? Laser focus on its topic, consistent quality throughout. And we see this repeated again and again. Enter the unknown. Right. Our book for explorers. Well, what kind of exploring is going on? Trade. Big game hunters. Finding those mysterious artifacts that suggest the galaxy is even older than we think. The types of people who become explorers. Right? Entrepreneurs. Scholars brings in the three new species, the three new specializations, and all the things which support those, including the signature abilities. Then we get into gear. So much interesting gear. Exploration, detection, medical. Right? Especially some excellent starships, patrol boats and that sort of thing, scout vessels. Heavy transports, old ships, right. and then some capital ships just for fun. Grand expeditions that goes into who are these explorers? What makes them tick? Right, and then getting into frontier life, things like tall tales, comic relief, foreshadowing, right. how to bring these unusual fringe characters to life. Right. Then the balance of adventure to mission comes with adventure seeds and the risks and rewards of exploration. Sponsors getting paid, dealing with hyper routes that have not yet been mapped out. That is explorers bringing us to colonists, which was the one I thought might you know, be the least interesting. But I can't believe the stuff that's in here. We have, of course, colonizing. What does that mean? The frontier, true colonists, building better worlds, it starts out with. So the colonist is divided between frontier doctors, politicians, and law keepers. So it looks at their obligations. It looks at three new species out there on the edge. It brings in the idea of being an entrepreneur, being a marshal, being an entertainer. The talents and signature abilities that support them. Then all the gear that you might find really useful living way out on the edge. Things that transport other things. Battle droids and Lots of vehicles, walkers, speeders, system vessels, small freighters, patrol boats, that sort of thing, capital ships. And then integrating the colonist characters, dealing with very specialized roles, right? Income. Right? If, there, if I have a complaint about the role-playing game as a whole, it's that in the core book, I've never really felt comfortable with income with money. These books have taken care of that nicely. Not only do I have a nice body of information to draw from for a, a large scale picture, I'm getting a very precise look at how it affects each of the character types directly. 
spaces, businesses, right? setting up shop in impossible places. Awesome. Okay. That's what you can expect. And stay on target is the same, just with a military theme focused on duty. The balance of power, let's say, is shifted toward small ships suitable for combat, but also some pretty intriguing things as opposition, such as larger vessels. Are they worth it? I leave that up to you. Can it be costly at around 20 to $25 per book? It will add up over time. The ability to allow you to focus more specifically on the one line that interests you most is an advantage there. Things that are introduced in one line will resurface again in these source books. That is all. I hope you've enjoyed this look inside these career source books. Thanks for watching.